Things are getting super real for Starship Super Heavy. Falcon 9 breaks records hoisting Starlink to orbit. Axiom Space and friends have some pretty dope missions lined up with the company. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX kicked off the work week on Monday with the continuation of Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7's push toward a first orbital launch attempt, conducting the vehicle's first full flight-like wet dress rehearsal at Starbase, Texas. The company tweeted this was the first time an integrated ship and booster were fully loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant. Today's test will help verify a full launch countdown sequence, as well as the performance of Starship and the orbital pad for flight-like operations. And the test must have went nominally all the way to T-0 because it was a one and done event, SpaceX graciously keeping us informed of the vehicle's status. After completing Starship's first full flight-like wet dress rehearsal, Ship 24 will be de-stacked from Booster 7 in preparation for a static fire of the Booster's 33 Raptor engines. Elon barely able to contain himself, writing, hop in, we're going to Mars, exclamation point. Easy there, chief. Board now and you'll just be taking a trip back to the shipyard. Because on Wednesday, the Mars rocket prototype was decapitated once again, using the tower to remove S-24 from its booster as planned. Elon's company reminding everyone this is happening so the booster can light all of its engines for the very first time without risk to the upper stage. So the following day, said Starship was transported up Highway 4, past the high bays, into the rocket garden, where Starships and boosters go to die. But most likely, this is just a temporary diversion, perhaps until room can be made in a bay where the ship is expected to receive some finishing touches with its thermal protection system. Just my speculations. Before Booster 7 attempts its potential final static fire before the first orbital launch, more behind the scenes work needs to be done. Like the booster's hydraulic power units needed replaced and further protection for the orbital launch mount's legs needs installed. But road closures are in place for next week. This could be related to Starship 25 testing. You can expect the 33 engine static fire to happen in the coming weeks, but don't expect the orbital launch attempt until most likely March. Early Thursday morning, SpaceX launched their latest Starlink mission to low Earth orbit from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 205th overall launch, and it will fly the heaviest payload ever flown on a Falcon 9, weighing in at over 17,400 kilograms, or about 38,000 pounds, or about the weight of a fire truck. This was the booster's ninth mission and landed on the autonomous drone ship, just read the instructions, out at sea in the Atlantic. All 56 Starlink satellites were deployed successfully. Although the month of January is coming to an end, two more Starlink missions are currently booked before February's arrival. Subscribe to my locals page to receive email notifications before every mission goes live. Concerning the Falcon Future, an asteroid mining startup called Astroforge announced this week that their first mission will launch this April aboard a shared Falcon 9 rocket to quote, demonstrate their refinery capabilities with the goal of validating our technology and performing extractions in zero gravity. Then follow it up with a second launch in October on a SpaceX rideshare with Intuitive Machines' Nova C moon lander to observe their targeted asteroid in preparation for their first retrieval mission. NASA has approved Axiom's next privately crewed mission to the International Space Station, AX-2. No date has been provided yet, but the commander and pilot will be astronaut Peggy Whitson and aviator John Schaffner, respectively. The two mission specialists slash tourists will be announced later. And speaking of Axiom, they announced last week that they're building the world's first entertainment arena and content studio module with Space Entertainment Enterprise. To be launched in 2024, the module will dock to Axiom's own part of the International Space Station so artists, producers, and creatives can develop, produce, record, and livestream content in microgravity. Although it's not clear yet if they'll be using Falcon to make it so. Although the first customer expected to use the habitat is Tom Cruise, who purchased a Dragon ticket a few years back so he can film a movie at the ISS. We are creating thousands of jobs, you And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Tuesday, Rocket Lab launched their two-stage Electron rocket from the United States for the very first time, which now allows the rocket provider to support more than 130 launch opportunities every year between their two sites, the other being Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. The mission, titled Virginia is for Launch Lovers, lifted off from Wallops Island, Virginia, carrying three satellites for Hawkeye 360, a radio frequency geospatial analytics company. Three. One. 
The payloads were successfully delivered to a 550 click low Earth orbit at 6 p.m. Eastern. Well, that's all for this week. It was good seeing you, or you seeing me. My gratitude goes out to the supporters of the show. Anyone can do the same using the links below. Love you guys. Have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed. Thank <laughs> you.